Hey guys, welcome to Split. Today we're talking about the Nothing Phone 2, the second phone from Nothing that hopes to be something. Let's get into it. Now, in a lot of ways, the Nothing Phone 2 has that refinement that reminds you a little bit of an iPhone. If you've ever held an iPhone 14 Pro in your hands, Looking at this phone, especially from the front, reminds you of that. If you remember my Nothing Phone 1 review, I used an iPhone case and it almost matched perfectly. Is that what they're going for? I don't really know. But keep that in mind, there are a lot of things here that they try to tweak to get your attention. Uh, even though this is more of a performance device in comparison to the Nothing Phone 1, it's still not quite flagship cream of the crop tier, but it is a good performance, but we'll get into that later. Let's start with the main differences in design. And it has changed a little, both internally and externally. Externally, if you don't look closely, you might miss them. Starting with the glyph system at the back, which is a big deal. We'll get into that a little later, but just know that they have made slight adjustments, especially with the indicator light in the corner over there. And the segments have also changed a bit. On the back, you will notice that there's a slightly curved raised edge, which makes it a little bit more comfortable to hold versus the flat version it used to be in the Nothing Phone 1. Uh, I like it, I don't know about you guys, let me know in the comments below. Uh, then if you flip to the front, the hole punch camera has been centralized to give it a bit more symmetrical look. And, and I like it because it also sort of aligns with the whole symmetrical, perfect edge bezel that goes all around the phone. But since we are on the front, let's talk about the screen. And it is a good screen. Yeah, so it is slightly bigger. Now it's 6.7 inches. It is an LTPO panel now, Quad HD AMOLED display. It goes all the way to 120 hertz refresh rate and is variable, which means it can dial itself all the way down to one hertz when the screen is not doing something that requires that high refresh rate to save you power, which is cool. And then when you're gaming or something that needs that smooth buttery flow motion, it'll amp itself right back up to 120 hertz. Plus, when you're outside, you can see this a bit more clearly now because it goes up to a 1,600 nits, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 1,600 nits. So it's not as high, again, as high as the Samsungs of the world or Apple, but it is pretty bright enough for you to see it in direct sunlight. And it doesn't look washed out because of this panel, which has been really ni nicely optimized. Most mid-tier phones in direct sunlight, you may be able to see them, but the colors will look a bit washed out or grayed out. This still looks quite vibrant, at least in my opinion anyway. So a lot of that stuff is all nice, but you can not get most of the stuff I've mentioned in a lot of mid-tier and high-end phones. But like I said, that's not what set this phone apart. What sets this phone apart is the refinement on certain things like it's, well, let's, let's be honest, it's pushing the glyph system, the lights at the back, if you will. This, that's what we call the glyph system. All right, they even have a fancy name for it, these lights. Now, in Nothing Phone 1, they were really a gimmick, like I'd said in my review. Um, you could use this to light up a subject for maybe close-up photography and you could uh, assign it to a ringtone, but it wasn't very useful. I mean, think about it. If my phone was laying face down and a certain contact had assigned a certain series of lights to calls, how would I know who that contact is without memorizing that pattern? And I'd have to memorize different patterns for different people. It was, it was a novelty. It was cool novelty. I mean, if you put your phone down and it glyphs, it gets everybody's attention, but wasn't very functional. So they have tried to enhance that a bit more like they promised with software this year. And so what they've done is they've enhanced the glyphs to be a bit more segmented. Now they have 33 light zones versus the, the 11 or so in the Nothing Phone 1 and about 785 individual LEDs in here. So what that does is it doesn't just let me assign a specific glyph to a contact, but I can force this special light up here to indicate when I'm getting a specific message from a specific medium, let's say WhatsApp or email from a specific contact. So when you really want to go dark mode and you don't want a specific ringtone to alert you that that's that special person calling, I can just look and see that light come on and I know that that's the person making that call and, and it's useful then, right? And then your argument would be, but typically most of the time your phone is going to be in your pocket anyway, right? And if it vibrates, you still have to take it out and look at the screen 
Or are you gonna take it out and then just look at the back and say, oh, it's Jay. No, you're gonna, you're gonna look at the screen and then you're gonna know who's calling. And most likely, probably you have a smartwatch or, I don't know, I, I think it does have its use. I'm not making a case that is not useful. Okay, here's a great example. Like, see the lighting system back here? Now also rocks as your volume indicator. So you know it's there, gimmicky, but cool. But that light also functions as a timer. So you can set a visual five minute timer that doesn't disturb anybody in the room. And you can see it kind of count down like a digital fuse that's burning down. And that fuse is also useful for third party apps. Right now it supports Uber, where the Uber is coming and then this, just, this, this bar acts as a countdown timer. You don't have to check your phone or anything. You just know how close it is and just come out and take the car. Cool? Yeah, I think it's cool. Gimmicky, but cool nonetheless. Uh, what else is new about the glyphs? You can compose your own glyph tones. I think I just made that up. Glyph tones is a thing. Jay, write that down. Glyph tones. You can compose your own glyph tones. So if, if the ones nothing has provided, which is a bit more than they did for Nothing Phone 1, I'm sure that update will go to Nothing Phone 1 as well. There are a whole lot more in terms of variety, but you can compose yours if you're of the musical inclination. It, it's an easy composer. Well, not easy, but it's a bit limited in my opinion, but it can give you something to play with and create your own unique glyph tones. And that way, you know, you're not stuck within the limit that was given to you when you open the phone. Gimmicky? but cool nonetheless, in my opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment below. Uh, yeah, so that, that's really it. Uh, if you think about the scenarios realistically, your glyphs are as useful when the phone is on the table facing downwards. What that's supposed to encourage you being a bit more present in the world when things are happening and not always checking your phone for feedback, especially if you set for a specific message or contact to reach you that way. Alternatively, like I said, most people have their phone in their pocket or somewhere where they're going to pull it out anyway and look at the screen or they would be wearing a smartwatch, which would indicate the type of message they're getting anyway. So you can fall on either side of the scenario. You can own both and be on the other side, but I guess it's what you want to do. And that option is there for that mindfulness with the cool factor to add to it. The lights are cool, guys. Let's get over it. The lights are cool. Moving on. Yeah. So we're talking about lights, 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 lights. I mean, this lights, everything you press, the light comes on, lights, 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 lights. How does that do with battery life? So this thing is rocking a 4,700 milliamp power battery, which is good, which is big. Not, you know, it's not amazing. Other phones have better, especially even in this price point and beyond. But performance wise, it's pretty solid so far. I have used this phone heavily, right, for a while. I game, browse music always streaming, everything on. I have gotten consistently six and a half to seven hours screen time with this guy. And that's a whole lot more than some other flagship, which I'm currently rocking. We shall not mention its name. And that's where, again, about refinement, like I talk about, consistency. Once this is refined to the point where you begin to trust certain things will work as they say they will work, I mean, that's it. And, and don't get me wrong, there are some bugs which we'll talk about later, but putting that much detail and attention to the little things like optimization gives a bit of a nudge in the right direction, which then leads us to experience, right? The whole experience of what you feel with the phone, enjoying your battery life, the sound quality is pretty good. You got the glyphs, you have the way it feels in your hand. The OS, this is nothing phone OS 2. So what they've done is they've taken stock Android 13, 14, and they've layered over nothing OS over it. Very clean stock manner. And they have this theme, which I really dig, is very monochromatic, simplified. It's just clean. And again, it's not novel. Almost any launcher you have today can recreate these. But the fact that it's coming straight out, bundled out of the box, and you don't have to get a third party app to do this, it's kind of cool. It, it, it even forces other apps you have already installed to go from their native feel into this feel. So nothing to lose. You don't have to, again, add on bloatware to get this like you would if you had to install a launcher in some instances. Not unique, but cool. Is it cool? It's cool. I know, I know. I say cool a lot. So that's what adds to part of the performance. Um, and, and that's just for the software. The sounds of this thing, also solid. I mean, when this phone locks, it's like a, stop. listen. I'm, I'm gonna do it again, I'm gonna do it on that. Hold on, let me unlock it. Hear that? 
it's there's something there's something there's something well i like it so the experience hasn't been all smooth and buttery like i've been trying to promote here like nothing paid me money no there has been some stutters i have gotten into stutter like if i'm playing a heavy game like that's why i jump right out and i go to the screensaver or i go to the always on screen it's like a bug that just happens or i even got it to freeze one time but after the first update i got um, that got resolved. I haven't seen it a bit. Maybe it's not resolved. Maybe I just haven't been able to recreate those experiences. And also the haptics, when I first tried them, they were a bit weird, a bit too jarring for something that's supposed to be refined. But the first update enhanced the haptics. I haven't read the update and it was actually something they had fixed. It enhanced the haptics. And it does feel much better now. Not flagship great, but it feels a whole lot better. So again, those refinements, if, if they're listening, and another company that does that actually listens to complaints would be Google, but this is not that video. These guys listen to the community and they bring that feedback and they try to make the adjustment as quickly as possible, which is a good thing when you're trying to build a community or followership for a particular device or product. Okay, still on performance. This thing is rocking a Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 not Gen 2, Gen 1. So basically the best of the best from last year. That's a, not a great thing, but also not a bad thing. Not a great thing because there are other phones out there, like I said, who are rocking stronger processors. But you guys know how I feel about processors. Most phones are optimizing their processors to look good when you're testing them, but not for real life situations. In real life, uh, most of those phones would burn out if you max them out to what they should do. But I'm not saying processors are not a great thing to have in your phone, I'm just saying, take performance with a pinch of salt. Benchmarks are benchmarks, they're just numbers on a piece of paper. Um, however, why is it not such a bad thing is because this is a tried and tested chip. So they've learned from everybody's mistake, they've had the time to optimize it, they've figured out how to make your battery last longer, how to make it perform better. Is it as fast as the latest chips? Not necessarily, but will it perform well with most of today's games and apps? Absolutely, it'll do just, it'll do just fine. So if you're a specs person and you want your device to have cream of the crop specs and it must have the latest Snapdragon 8 1400 something something that just has to fly when you bring it out of your pocket just catch fire. Pfft. This is not for you. But if you want it to just work and with a chip that's been tried and tested, then that's what's in here. And it does work. Another area where this phone is not killing it would be the cameras. It's a 50 megapixel ultra wide and, and primary sensor, right? F.2, F.1.8 and 2.2 respectively. This thing, I don't know if it's a software thing, but the pictures I've taken so far or the situations where I've tried to do video, it struggles with skin tones versus some other phones, like especially the Pixel. It struggles with when you're pointing it directly at the light source, uh, which I bitched about in Pixel, but this is way worse. It just gets confused. And what else? Yeah, the front megapixel is still stuck at 1080p in today's world. So it's not gonna give you as great as some other devices are gonna give you out there. So again, if you're top tier specs guy, I gotta have the cream of the crop. This camera system may not do it for you. It's an okay camera system. It's not as okay. It's not, you're not gonna get as consistent shots as you would from a pixel, which costs just as much and maybe even less uh, in terms of computational photography. Uh, but that's 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 what it is. You, you can't win them all. Hopefully software updates will see what they can do. I have faith in computational photography, but nah, I'm not gonna hold my breath on this one. So is it worth 600 bucks? If you think about it with phones like the Google Pixel 7a and other lots of Asian phones out there that have like a million features well within that price range, it's a tough call if you're just uh, looking for pound for pound processor power and feature wise. But if you want refinement and you're looking to join that nothing community where they've taken time to think through about how this light cliff system is going to evolve into something else, how they've taken the time to worry about things like slight curves and polishing out the system so that you get a feel for a certain uniqueness in a price point that is supposed to be mid tier but not high tier, then these are the guys that you may want to consider. Is it? something you can recommend easily absolutely i think anybody who you recommend this to within that price point range will be happy with this device even if it's not shooting star um, in terms of performance for specs but in terms of performance for daily use you'll be you'll be just fine 
But if you're a pixel peeper, spec peeper, and you want best of the best, like I said, this is not for you. This won't tick all those boxes. But if you want to put your phone down and get some attention, this is probably the phone that will do it. So yeah, that's my time. Let me know what you guys think about the Nothing Phone 2 in the comments below. I will do it. There's a comparison video we are working on right now uh, for Nothing Phone 1 versus 2. And then I'll, I'll put it up against the other phone within this tier. And let me know in the comments what else you want to see. I will see you guys in the next video. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Help us with that algorithm. Uh, Google is kicking our butts. Thank you so much. Take care.